Let's talk about scroll saw blades. Probably the most confusing topic when you first get started in the scroll saw hobby uh, is how to select your scroll saw blade for a given project. Now, first of all, let me say that I think this is a uh, topic that uh, gets way over discussed. Uh, as a new scroller, you really need to know very little about uh, your scroll saw blades. And for the most part, you can get started with a very small collection of blades. And I'll give you some of that uh, at the end of this video. But uh, just to uh, uh, satisfy your interest in so scroll saw blades, I want to put this video together to give you some details about uh, how they're made and the different uh, features and purposes for the blades. To do that, I'm going to use these uh, scroll saw blade replicas that I've cut out of plywood and we'll talk about the different features. The first thing you need to know about scroll saw blades is they come in uh, two different types uh, that are intended for two different types of projects. And what you'll find is that you have plain end blades and pin end blades. Now the pin end blades can be distinguished by the small pin that you see here in this uh, demonstration blade uh, that goes through the end of the pin. And this pin is used to hold the blade in the clamp of the scroll saw. Now some scroll saws only accept pin end blades, some only accept uh, plain end blades, and some accept both. Uh, for fretwork type scrolling and the type of scrolling that you see on my website, I highly recommend that you buy a saw that does accept plain end blades and uh, I'll show you why here in just a second. In traditional scroll saw fretwork, you generally are going to do a lot of what we call interior cuts. And to do that, you're going to use a drill bit to drill a hole in your piece of wood and you're going to insert the blade through that hole uh, to make your interior cut. With a plain end blade, like I have demonstrated here, you can get the blade through the hole with no problem. But if you were to try to do the same thing with a pin end blade, you can see you need a much larger hole to get the pin through. And that's the primary difference. The pin end blades are used for uh, uh, more coarse type projects where you're generally going to be just doing outside cuts or very large interior cuts. So again, my suggestion is to find a saw that accepts plain end blades. When you go to the store to buy your scroll saw blades or when you try to order them offline, you're going to see some terminology and some numbers that you may not understand. So I'm going to use these demonstration blades to give you a little better understanding of just what's meant by these different numbers and terms and you'll have an easier time selecting your blade. In this case here, I've got a tube of scroll saw blades. And in this uh, particular tube, we have Flying Dutchman, which is a brand name of blades that I highly recommend. Very high quality. On the packaging, it calls these a scroll reverse blade. And the make or model of this particular blade is the FDSR number three. Now, in this case, the FDSR stands for Flying Dutchman Scroll Reverse. The number three is just a designation of uh, the approximate size of the blade and that's not as meaningful as the actual statistics by that number. In this case it says it's a 5 inch which means the blade is 5 inches long which is standard for almost all scroll saws sold today and it's 0 0.035 inches wide and we'll talk about that in a second and 0 0.013 inches thick. Down below that these particular blades are 13 TPI, and the TPI stands for teeth per inch, and we'll talk about that. So let's move on now to the demonstration blades, and I'll describe what all these numbers and uh, uh, words mean. First, let's talk about my little demonstration blade. This would be a replica of a plain end blade because there's no pin in the end. This is one end of the blade, and this uh, end would be clamped into one of the blade holders. The length of the blade would be five inches long, which we talked about uh, on the flying dustman blade I just talked about. In this case, I've only uh, actually cut out uh, one end of the blade, so the blade would extend longer down. When they talk about the number three scroll saw 
uh, number three blade or Flying Dutchman number three blade. That's a, a number designation uh, that each company uses to describe the approximate size of their blade. Now in general, the smaller the number, the finer the blade, the larger the number, the coarser the blade. But let's talk about that a little bit more in detail. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the specs on uh, these blades right here. And uh, like I said, the uh, package of blades I have here are the Flying Dutchman Scroll Reverse number three. And just for a minute now, I'm going to skip over the scroll reverse part of that, and we'll come back to that in a second. But let's talk about the numbers that are beside it. The five inch by 0 0.035 inch by 0 0.013 inch and the 13 teeth per inch. Let's talk about those numbers real quick first. On a standard scroll saw blade like we have right here, you have your teeth and in this case this would be the end of the blade that goes in the upper blade holder because the teeth should be pointing down. In other words, the, the blade cuts on the downstroke on a standard scroll saw blade. The blade would be five inches long, which is the first designation uh, that we see on our package of blades. And again, that's standard for all modern scroll saws. The 0 .035 is the width of the blade, and that would be the width from the back of the blade to the point of the teeth. And the 0 .013 would be the thickness of the blade. And the last number we want to talk about is the 13 teeth per inch. And that is just simply the number of teeth on the blade in a one inch section of that blade. Now let's discuss what each of those numbers mean in the real world. The first number is the length of the blade. And again, it's five inches. And like I've said a couple times already, that's the standard length of a scroll saw blade. Uh, so when you're looking online or looking in the store, you want a five inch blade. The second number, again was the width of the blade and that's going to come that's going to run pretty close with the number designation that I talked talked about earlier in this case the number three and that's a little less important uh, in this case than the thickness of the blade so let's talk about the thickness of the blade in this case uh, this package of blades is 0 0.013 inches thick the thickness of the blade is going to make a huge difference in what's known as the kerf that you cut out of the piece of wood. In this case, this is the board that we're going to be cutting our project out of, and this is our blade. As the scroll saw moves the blade up and down and it cuts through the wood, it actually removes a certain amount of the wood, and that's called the kerf. The kerf is determined by the thickness of the blade. In this case, our Flying Dustman number blade is 0 .013 inches thick. Uh, so that's a fairly thin blade and it will remove a fairly thin kerf from the project. Now your question may be, why do you worry about how much wood is actually removed as you're cutting? Well, in fret work, sometimes we cut very, very fine, delicate work. So a thinner blade is going to remove less kerf and give you the ability to make tighter turns and more intricate cuts. The next designation that I want to talk about on these Flying Dustman blades is the teeth per inch or the TPI. Now again, that's simply the number of teeth that are in a given inch of that blade. Now why is that important? Well, when you're removing wood from the kerf, like we just talked about, you need to remove that wood efficiently to reduce the amount of heat and make a cleaner cut. The more teeth per inch, the smaller the gullet, which is the area between the teeth, the less wood is removed on each particular stroke of the blade. The wider the kerf, or the wider the gullet between the teeth, the more wood is removed uh, per each stroke of the blade, and you will reduce the amount of heat and it'll also be a more aggressive cut. So if you're using thicker wood, you want to have less teeth per inch. And if you're using thinner wood, you generally want to go with more teeth per inch. Now, none of these things are 100% uh, 
this is the way you have to do it. Almost all of this stuff uh, is going to vary depending on the density of the wood you're cutting, the type of material you're cutting, and other factors. So these are just the uh, explanations of these numbers and not to be uh, held as something you have to do. Okay, now let's go back to uh, the term we talked about earlier, and that's the scroll reverse uh, designation of this particular uh, batch of blades we have here. On a standard scroll saw blade, all the teeth are pointed in one direction and the blade should be inserted with all the teeth pointing down. Now what this uh, does is it causes the blade to cut only on the downstroke. On a scroll reverse blade, the teeth are pointed down and then they reverse and they point up. So as this wood or as this blade moves up and down through the wood, it's going to cut on the downstroke and then on the bottom of the piece it's going to cut on the upstroke. And what that uh, feature gives you is that the bottom of your workpiece will come out much cleaner than with a standard blade. Uh, as you cut, you'll find that uh, if you use a standard blade, you'll have to do more sanding on the back of the piece you're working on than you will on the front. And that's simply because the reverse teeth uh, cut on the upstroke and it removes those burrs.